In this video, I want to talk about geometric power series. So geometric power series. So geometric power series are typically something you learn in a Calculus 2 course. However, uh, this is used other times in other math courses in the future. So it's one of those topics that is really nice because you learn it in one course and then you get to use it again in, in other courses. So the formula for geometric power series is the following. So if we have the infinite sum starting at 0 and going to infinity of x to the n, this is actually equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And this is only true if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is the formula that we typically use in the geometric power series problems. Notice this last condition here implies that x is less than 1 and bigger than negative 1. This is your interval of convergence. So in all of the problems when you're working this out, you basically use this and then you solve for x and that will give you your interval of convergence every single time. Let's go ahead and do a simple problem. Oh, oh, before I do, let me just mention that this just comes directly from um, the geometric series test. So notice like x is your r. Remember the r has to be less than 1 in order to get convergence and there was a formula. Same thing. It's the same thing. All right, let's do a simple example where we um, find the power series and the interval of convergence. Actually, this is not a simple example. This one's a little bit um, harder, so this will be good. So 1 over 3 minus x, that's our function, and our center is 1. So this is going to be the center of the power series. And the question is to find a power series. So find power series. And we'll also find the interval. So find interval of convergence. So in the formula above, um, the c is 0 because it looks like this, x minus 0 to the n. So we want c, equal to, c to be equal to 1. So we want x minus 1 to the n. So this x here needs to be x minus 1. So let's go ahead and go through it very, very carefully. So solution. So the first thing you do in these problems is you actually write down the function again. So you write it down as 1 over 3 minus x. Okay, that's, that's step 1. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write the formula over here one more time so you see it. So it's this. Okay. And this is true if the absolute value of x is less than 1. Okay. This next step is absolutely critical. So this is equal to. Okay, so we have to fit this form somehow, right? We have to fit this. Except we have the 1 up top, so that's okay. And the center here is going to be 1. So we need something like 1 over 1 minus x minus 1. We need something like that. We need an x minus 1 here. Here, here we have an x. Here we have an x. It needs to be x minus 1 because we want to have x minus 1 to the n. So what you do is you just put it there. Okay, You just write down what you want. So if it was like c equals 2, you would just write down x minus 2. If it's c equals negative 1, you would write down x plus 1. So you just write down what you want. Then you put parentheses. You say, okay, this can't be correct. So here you have a negative x. So that means you have to put a negative here. Right? That way you have your negative x. No choice there. So let's think about what we have here. We actually have negative x plus 1. That's what we have. However, we need negative x plus 3. So we're missing a 2. So we put a 2 here. So that's how you do it. So now uh, you'll notice that there's a 2 here. In the formula, we have a 1. So what you do is you pull out the 2 on the bottom. So now you have 1 over 1 minus. And then when you pull out that 2, you get x minus 1 over 2. 
And so now we're finally in a position where we can use the formula. Let's go ahead and keep going. I'll come back and explain this step again uh, a little bit later. This is equal to 1 half. Okay, this is your x right here. So it's going to become infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. Uh, and then we have x minus 1 over 2 to the n. By the way, this is only true if the absolute value of x is less than 1. In other words, if the absolute value of x minus 1 over 2 is less than 1, right? This is your x. This has to be less than 1 in absolute value. Let's keep going. This is equal to 1 half infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x minus 1 to the n over 2 to the n. There's a 2 to the 1 here. So when you distribute this into the sum, you end up adding the exponents. So this is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x minus 1 to the n. And then on the bottom, we get 2 to the n plus 1 because we add the exponents. 2 to the 1 times 2 to the n is 2 to the n plus 1. So this is the answer. This is the series that we wanted. This is the power series representation of the function. This function, 1 over 3 minus x, is equal to this, provided this condition is true. Let's go ahead and find the interval of convergence using this condition. So I'm going to rewrite it again over here. So we have x minus 1 over 2, less than 1. So basically, you can take the absolute value of each piece. The absolute value of 2 is just 2, so you can just do that. Then you multiply by 2, so you get absolute value x minus 1, less than 2. Okay? So this means, let me just save some room here, this means that you have x minus 1 less than 2 and bigger than negative 2. You can always do that. When you drop the absolute value, you get a plus or a minus. Add 1 to all three sides. It's going kind of fast. So you get negative 1 less than x less than 3. That would be your interval of convergence, or if you prefer to write it in an interval notation, this would also be an acceptable answer. So recap. Let's actually do it one more time. Let me just go through this first step. This is the key step. If you can get past this step, you got this, right? This is the hardest step for people to understand because once it's written down, like if you just look at this, it's kind of hard to understand. It's only It only makes sense when like it's explained to you. Let me do it again. 1 over 3 minus x. Okay, so you have the 1. So the center is 1. So we want the center to be 1. So you just put down x minus 1. You say, okay, parentheses. All right, we have a negative x, so you got to put the negative there. Oh, we really have negative x plus 1. Oh, okay, so we really need a 2 because we're trying to get to 3, so 2. Boom. And then after this, you factor out the, the 1 half. So you basically always write down the center, and then you go from there. In the videos that follow, you'll see many examples of this same exact problem. So we'll, we'll do a bunch of these so you get tons of practice. And once you can do one of these on your own, in theory, you can do, uh, you can do all of them. So, so that's it. That's geometric power series. Also, this does come up later. If you study more mathematics, um, this comes up later when you study uh, Laurent. I can't even spell it. I think it has an E. It's pretty bad. I forgot how to spell it. <laughs> Laurent series. I think it might have an E. When you study Laurent series in complex variables or complex analysis, if you take that class, um, it's the same exact thing. So it comes up again and again and again. Until next time, good luck and take care.